I'm Gold Derby Senior Editor Denton Davidson, and welcome to our Cinematography Panel with 2024 Emmy nominees. Joining me for this roundtable are Emmy nominees Gary Baum from Frasier, Adam Brick from Hacks, and Siggy Rosen-Rawlings from The Traders. It's great to have you all here, and I just want to start out asking, you know, what inspired you to get into this line of work as cinematography? Because, I mean, I remember being a kid, I loved movies and TV, but it was acting, directing, that's what we see. So how did you sort of discover this as a career opportunity? And then what what really led to that big break? Gary, maybe I'll start with you. Uh, well, that's pretty easy. Um, I, I've always been interested in photography and always had a camera in my hand. And um, one day in high school, uh, I was coming off the train station and uh, I saw a lot of lights and cameras. And I said, uh, what are you guys shooting? And the guy said, uh, it's called The French Connection. And I said, oh, all right, whatever. So uh, <laughs> the next three days, a buddy of mine and myself, uh, we were watching the chase scene, iconic chase scene down um, you know, in Coney Island, the train station, which was Bay 50th, which was our train station, you know, the, the killing on the steps. and. I, I was just intrigued. I said, well, I didn't realize this was something that I could, you know, this was an, an opportunity. I, I never saw, you know, a film crew before, you know. So uh, fast forward, you know, moved to Los Angeles a few years later. Uh, and uh, um, I took a class at uh, UCLA. Uh, it was a writing class with Nat Perrin, and, uh, who's a famous uh, screenwriter. Marx Brothers, a lot of comedy, and he introduced me to a cinematographer uh, named uh, Joe Rutenberg, uh, Academy Award winner, and uh, we struck up, you know, a conversation, and uh, make a long story short, I, I worked at Panavision for a while, and then I got a job over at, you know, Lorimar, uh, which is an MGM loading film, so I kind of came up, you know, that way, kind of traditional from the bottom up. But basically, that's that's how I got into the business. It was just a chance, a chance uh, location shoot that I I just uh, and I met the cinematographer after the fact, um, Owen Roisman, you know, at the time, and uh, we had uh, I worked with him a little bit, but it was just uh, one of those things, you know, it was just uh, fate, I guess. Adam, what about you? What sort of inspired you to get into this field? Yeah, you know, when I, when I was a kid, um, my dad got a new job and we relocated from Chicago uh, to New Jersey. I have three younger sisters and um, my mom to sort of get us acclimated into our, our new community, enrolled us in a community theater. And um, I enjoyed acting in the plays, but I was uh, most into the guy that would come at the end of the run and film the play and uh, distribute the VHS tapes to all the performers to, to buy. And I, uh, I wanted, I wanted that job. So um, I went to film school, I went back to Chicago and then uh, one summer um, uh, a friend of mine was uh, traveling to Los Angeles to go to the summer program at, at USC at the film school. And uh, I tagged along and he was interested in photography and had enrolled in the uh, advanced cinematography class. Um, and it was my first time in California and it was on a soundstage with big lights and 35 millimeter cameras. And I was just like totally hooked and, and caught the bug. Um, transferred to USC and, and finished film school there. And then, uh, you know, just started hustling and, and working as a cinematographer. As a cinematographer. Siggy, how about you? What, what, how did you end up in this situation? Well, I, my, my mum was a, a feminist filmmaker. So I was always kind of, I, there were always cameras in my house. Um, so uh, there were some very early video cameras. Um, so I kind of had that around me. I, I, I didn't have like a dream of becoming a cinematographer. I wanted to be a music producer or a DJ. Um, but I, but I went to university. I studied uh, film as well, and I sort of um, like if your if your parent was a carpenter, I think I sort of went down the kind of family uh, tr tradition and and ended up um, 
working in television as a, as a runner. Um, I still didn't have any aspirations of becoming a, a, a cinematographer, but I started to see uh, what people did on set and understand um, what they were doing. And I, I just had a, a natural, I was drawn to, to the camera department. And so I kind of worked my way up um, through the camera department uh, and did a lot of um, entertainment television and um, music based shows and, and documentaries over the years. So it's, yeah, sort of, that's kind of how I got into it. It was a long road. And Gary, you've had this decades long career now. Um, we talked a little bit about that in your in your one on one interview. Is there something in your career that you have yet to do um, that you just would like to to dabble in? If if you had to if you had to do something other than you know the multi cam comedy, what would you want to do? Just maybe for a day, just to just to dip your foot in. Uh, well. I've always been attracted to the noir side of uh, filmmaking. Um, every time I get an opportunity to shoot something in that nature, um, like on a you know a swing set or you know a story point, um, I I really enjoy that. So I think for a day or a week or whatever it takes, I would like to shoot some sort of a uh, a noir black and white. Uh, show you know uh i i just uh love uh that um hard light and shadows and uh i don't get a chance to do that um uh, with my work so i think that would that would be a good outlet for me and and i still do that in my own photography so that's sort of like my release point uh yeah. but I, I still would like to do that and i'd like to shoot film again one day so uh that would be, you know, we we sh we don't shoot film multi camera, so yeah. it's all it's all you know, four K now. And Adam, I know you got your first Emmy nomination for you know like like a cooking nonfiction series. So like, what kind of what kind of thing have you not branched out to yet that maybe you want to try once? Yeah, you know, I think uh, yeah, that was uh, um, for Chef's Table, which is a. Uh, which is a show that we're that we're that we're still doing. Um, I, 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 you know, I think it's interesting. Like, I as a a young, uh, ambitious cinematographer, I think you wanna you wanna do something you haven't you haven't done before, and and uh, something something new. I don't know exactly what that would be. It's like you know, I'm, uh, just you know, embarking on the starting on the fourth season of Hacks, um, and I think you know, uh, really digging into that. So, so I'm, I'm excited to continue that journey and and tell and tell that story. And then I think after that, it'll probably be something that isn't a comedy or just like you know what the the, the next thing you want it to be different than what you've done previously. And see, how about you? Other than maybe stepping behind the DJ booth. <laughs> um, well, uh, do you know what? I'm a, I'm a really big fan of. Gary and uh, Adam's work so I'd love to do any kind of comedy stuff I've done bits of comedy in the past um, but I, lo I, I love working on I've loved working on comedy shows I, what I what I love about being a director of photography cinematographer is the very how varied things can be um, so I'd love to shoot I've not shot a feature film yet I'd love to shoot a feature film um, you know I'd love to shoot more documentaries music videos I, I love the kind of the, the fact that you can do so many different things in, in a week or a month. Um, so yeah, I'd like to do what these, these guys are doing. And Adam, what do you think is one of the biggest misconceptions that people have about cinematographers, maybe people that aren't in the business or, or aren't behind the cameras all the time that, I mean, I hear some that's like, they don't really understand who's deciding the shots. Is it the cinematographer or the, the director, they don't know the difference between director of photography and cinematographer. <laughs> There's all these questions. What for you is is like one of the misconceptions people have about your work that that you would like to clear up? Yeah, I mean, I think that it can take many different, you know, those there there are tons of different definitions and 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 that's appropriate. I think, you know, you're it's a collaborative art form, which is which it what makes it fun. So there's not, you know, one person deciding the shot. It's, it's myself and, and the director and our camera operators all collaborating. Uh, same with the lighting. It's, you know, I'm collaborating, not just with the gaffer and the key grip, but sometimes with the production designer. Um, so, so it is a, it is a collaborative art form and the role can be different, you know, based on, on what suits the project best. 
Siggy, how about you? Misconception. Um, I mean, just going back to what Adam was saying, it's, it's definitely a team effort. You know, there's no, there's not one person make, making the show, um, and that is, it's really important that people can work together and um, work well together and are collaborative. Um, one of the other misconceptions, maybe, um, is uh, how long it takes to to to, to shoot a, a reality show uh, or or an episode, um, and how how fast how fast paced it can be as well on the traitors, especially. It's 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 really fast, and that's that's part of that's part of this immersive bubble that that that, that we're trying to create. So yeah, maybe that's. I'm not sure if that answers your question. Yeah. And Gary, how about you? Have you ever had to gone, go to battle with a director in all your decades? How many fights have you gotten uh, in when a shot's supposed uh, to be? Just one, but that was that, it wasn't relating to the show. <laughs> <laughs> that was a while back. But <clears throat> to everybody's point, um, <clears throat> I, I'd like to consider myself a cinematographer, you know, like a uh, famous interview with uh, um, Vittorio Storaros. He re always rejected that term, director of photography, because it's a misnomer. I'm not directing anything. He says, I'm cinematographer. And what everybody's saying, Adam and Siki, is like, it's a collaborative effort. You know, uh, we're, we're there to push along the vision of the showrunner or the director. And any way we can help uh, is our job, I think. So in, to, and to that point, um, for me personally, I consider myself a lighting cameraman because like the English style, because I don't really, as a multi-camera, we don't really get into each shot because it'll be impossible. You know, it's that's the director and the operators work very closely together, you know, and I'm there to facilitate all of that. So in that respect, um, yes, um, I think the cinematographer, um, acronym is, is more is more apropos for like i think what we do you know i'm listening to adam and siggy and for sure you know it's a collaborative effort um so anyway i, I want to say that uh, i watched uh hacks uh the clip and uh from the uh, emmy submissions and it was it was incredible i really i really enjoyed oh, that thank you gary thank and you. siggy i have now i have to watch traders so oh, yeah, well, it's, 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 I it's, haven't it's, seen it to be very honest, but now I have to look at it. Yeah, so. A lot of people have it. Once you start, you sort of can't stop. Just, yeah, just it's go, on. It, just go uh, back to the bookmarked it. Okay, yeah, make sure you watch it. Okay, just come back to the the director of photography and the cinematography question. So I might not have answered it properly, but in in the UK, we don't tend to be called cinematographers if we're working on a reality show, um, and we used to be called. Um, Lighting camera, lighting cameramen or lighting camera operators. Um, then it became DOP uh, probably about 10 years ago when we all started getting called uh, DOP. Um, but now maybe we'll all start getting called cinematographers as well because I like I like the I like the name. Gary, and Gary, can I ask? Oh, sorry, just a quick question about the the multi cam approach that was. You guys can cut this out if it isn't interesting, but I was just curious. Yeah. Like, do you um? Do you tend to prioritize a shot for lighting or do you treat them all equally? Or how do you sort of how do you sort of approach that when you're when you're tasked with covering so many angles at once? Well, you know, basically uh, in the traditional sense of the word of, of um, multi camera like Frasier, uh, the other show is working on how I met your father was more of a hybrid. So we, we go out a lot and do. But on, on a set, it's a shot uh, basically proscenium style. So um, you have four cameras in your three wall set. So the approach uh, basically is we have to light the set uh, first, and then we have to watch a rehearsal to see where the actors go. And um, then we, we, we fine tune it from there. So that's the first thing. And uh, we don't, we don't, we can't use any, any uh, fixtures, any lights on the floor because the cameras are constantly moving. You know, you'll have 40, 40 moves in a scene with four cameras and that's about average so we can't have anything on the floor so everything is lit from the grid or above so that's the challenge of that and that's the approach we have to do use back key crosses and some fill 
And um, I mean, you're welcome to come to my set anytime. So you too, Siggy. I mean, we can. I'll take you up on that offer. It sounds okay, you should. Yeah, I'd, I'd love. I'd love for you to come down. And then I, I do carry um, some uh, OB lights on my camera. Uh, each camera oh, cool. has an LED OB light um, that we we've designed for certain certain things. You know, get out of you know a certain jams. You know, if if the actors don't hit their marks or. Uh, they change blocking on the fly, which sometimes they do, you know, in a live situation. And, uh, you know, you, you really don't have the luxury to light, to relight the set. You know, you have to, you have to wing it. So I, I imagine it's quite the, quite the symphony with the four cameras moving around. And I assume there's lighting cues involved in the whole thing. Absolutely. It's there's lighting, right. There's there. It's a ballet. We call it a ballet. I love you know, it. There, there's lighting cues. There are uh, dolly cues. Uh, an operator cool. and assistant will have probably. Oh, I'm, I'm just being you know general on a, a three minute scene, a four page scene. You'll have ten or twelve um, uh, marks. You know, not on the dolly, but on 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 the lens. You know, we use zoom lenses, and and you know the operator will have you know different assignments. So it's a uh, you know. It's a rehearsal. It's a ballet. Yes, it's definitely a symphony. There's a there's a little bit of that on hacks, but not not to that degree. It's a, it's a it's a single camera approach, but it's a it's a three camera show. And um, you know, we were very ambitious of trying to fit fit them fit them all in. No nowhere near what you're what you're what you're pulling off. But you know, our 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 uh, our lead camera operator uh, Joel Marsh built a little system where on his hand uh, shoulder mount he can communicate with the other cameras to shift over left and right. And it's fun watching them all vibe together to to capture the right angle. Yeah, it's it's definitely it's definitely an art, and it's definitely something you have to rehearse. People don't realize yeah. that. So it's definitely a uh, uh, definitely uh, something like you know you haven't seen before. I understand. Yeah, that's really cool. Anyway, your, your show looks great, and I'm like I said, Siki, and I have to, I really have to tune in and watch that. So, Gary, you mentioned inviting them to your sets, and yeah. I'm just going to take you back yeah. off that a little bit. How important is mentorship in this business, as especially in something like cinematography and a lot of these behind the scenes, set jobs, you know, how important is it to get that mentor, to get that next break, to, to get to the point where you are a director of photography, which all of you have um, been able to achieve? Yeah, I, you know, I've, I've, I've retuned my, my approach the last few years. And as far as giving back, you know, like I'm not, I'm not done yet <laughs> in any sense of the word, but um, I've, you know, through the ASC, I've I've mentored you know some people and um, and people come like we like I'll be up for instance we had um, we're over at Paramount shooting um, a Fraser and one of the pages um, came up to me she does all the uh, tours and whatnot and she says hey, do you mind if I ask you some questions and I said no sure and um, she was a student at, at UCLA and uh, at USC excuse me. Uh, uh, in cinematography and she's very young and um you know i i was really intrigued about how the questions she was asking and um you know we try to help everybody along you know and um i always tell my operators and my assistants you know pay attention to you know what we're doing you know like uh i did you know i always paid attention to lighting because i was always you know, attracted to that so you're always paying attention to someone else's job in a way because it makes your job better. Plus, you know what what goes on for the next, you know, your next, you know, step in your career. You know, so you're not just you know flying blind. You know, and uh, and I, another an addendum to that, you know, I was mentored too. So you know, by you know Tony Askins and uh, John C. Flynn the third and. Um, you know, you're encouraged to, you know, pay attention, you know, and uh, it's, uh, that's, that's the key. And I, you know, and I, since I came up through the ranks, I know everybody's job. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to ask an operator or ask an assistant do something that can't be done. You know, I know it could be done. Or if there's something that can't be done, I know it can't be done, you know, so, and that it goes both ways. So, 
you know, I'm constantly learning as well, you know, on the set, you know, you're always learning something, something new, you know, so, but I think, you know, taking somebody on, on their year of wing or uh, talking to people who are really interested in doing what you're doing is, is, is key to, to their, their involvement and their progression. And it's also key to your, your own, you know, you, you, I feel a lot better when I'm, when I'm, um, helping somebody along, to be honest, you know, it just makes me, it makes me uh, proud that someone else is doing something that, you know, that, that they want to do, you know. And Siggy, what about you? What, what do you wish you would have known <laughs> your first, your first day on set that you were just clueless about that? Now you're thinking, okay, now if I would have only known this, um, you know, what's something that you would be able to share with your younger self? Oh gosh, that's a that's a big uh, big question. I, I started operating in two thousand and three, so and my memory is not that great. Uh, maybe uh, probably uh, as uh, as we were just talking about, um, paying more attention to lighting. Probably, I think from the beginning, um, uh, you know, I was shooting um, kind of entertainment, kind of news, really, and. Um, I didn't get a chance to to get my hands on lighting until much later. When I did, I started to really pay attention to it. But I was I was often on set, behind, shooting behind the scenes on big movies or, or music videos, and I didn't pay any attention to the lighting. I was too focused on getting the the, the coverage for the for the director. But yeah, I think uh, I think getting into lighting maybe at an earlier stage would have would have been useful. And Adam, just to sort of close things off, you know, what's what's one of your biggest lessons you've you've learned at this stage of your career? Um, and you're still you're still learning too. Uh, we as we see, right? yeah, you got course. a million problems, Gary. We love that. Yeah. No, I you know I, um, you know I think that it's just really important, uh, you know, as a cinematographer to sort of trust your instincts and um, and creatively, you know, uh, just trust trust yourself. You know, I. The, the you know the story that I tell um, about you know starting Chef's Table uh, you know prior prior to that show I I never shot food before so it's like you just kind of go into it and trust yourself and figure out your own unique way uh, of of shooting it and and have the confidence in that and I think that that's how um, you know sometimes it doesn't work but sometimes you come up with something unique and and, and special and then in terms in terms of of, of mentorship. Um, you know, great to it's great to hear what what, what Ziggy and, and and Gary are are saying. I I second all of that. I was uh, I've been lucky and honored to be invited to join uh, the ASC uh, this year, and um, being around uh, these ASC cinematographers, you know, many of whom are people that I. Uh, have uh, looked up to for a long time. You know, seen in magazines. Um, you know, very scary for me to like interact uh, with with some of these people, but everyone has just I, I've found that everyone has just been uh, so nice and um, really uh, willing to share. And uh, it's just the cinematography uh, community is, is a very supportive one. So I'd, I'd encourage young cinematographers to uh, to reach out, you know, uh, Cinematographers love talking about cinematography. Our emails aren't, aren't hard to find. So, uh, you know, you know, reach out and um, it's fun. Well, listen, Gary, Adam, Siggy, congratulations to all of you once again on your Emmy nominations uh, for Frasier, um, How I Met Your Mother, The Secondary, and then um, Axe and The Traitors. Such a fun panel. And, and thanks for joining us. And Good luck to all of you. You're not competing with each other, so I can I can legitimately say I hope you all win. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure to pleasure to meet you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank you.